Today we're talking about this amazing color from Benjamin Moore. It's a bit different than the grays and neutrals we're all accustomed to. It's called Amethyst Shadow CC-930. My goal today is to tell you how you might want to use it in your home. And also stay tuned for some color pairings that I picked for it, as well as some trim colors you can paint your baseboards and your doors and your frames with. That way you're equipped to have an entire color palette custom made for you and for everyone else watching. If that's all right with you, then just go ahead and click that like button and let's get this thing moving. So color trends are very much changing year to year. Oftentimes there's a bit of a cyclical pattern that can happen as well. But what I can say for sure is a good portion of us are tired of the grayscale, more gray neutral sort of color schemes that have been dominating interior design for the last decade. I think as a whole, we're starting to embrace color a lot more and not just neutrals with color hues, but the more deeper saturated colors as well. Amethyst shadow is that. It's very saturated, it's a dark color, and it does contain gray, so technically it's not a full departure, but it has enough color hue within it to present itself as purple. I would almost interpret that it contains a little more black than gray because it does feel very shaded, but it is giving you a dusty shade of purple at the end of the day. This is great because it sort of satisfies both things where you have enough color so it doesn't feel boring, but it's also not overly vibrant as a purple. It's not gonna look like you just splashed grape Fanta all over your walls. It has a little bit of a toned down effect. So if you are are someone that has been gravitating towards neutrals for so long, this is sort of a baby step towards big, bright, bold colors. It's dark and dramatic, but not overbearing, let's say. In terms of color temperature, purples can really go either way. If they go warmer, they tend to feel more red leaning and almost like a kind of a berry like purple, or you can go cooler and be a little more icy and blue leaning. I would classify this as a cooler looking purple, but it's not overly blue leaning at the same time. It is kind of balanced, I would say, although your lighting will determine how cool it will look in person. And oftentimes I think colors like this will tend to feel cooler in your home because you might have direct sunlight, which is cooler leaning, or those newer LED lights tend to be cooler leaning and that can influence the look of this color. The only way to know for sure though is just to test the color out before you put it on your walls. It's also a very dark color. So the way we determine darkness when it comes to paint color is LRV or light reflectance value. And this is just a zero to 100 scale that tells us how much light a color reflects. Anything close to zero will be close to black. Anything that's near 100 is gonna be white. So Amethyst Shadow has an 18.29 LRV, which is technically in the bottom fifth the bottom 20% of colors. It is dark, but it's not at that level where you're going to confuse it with black. Maybe if you turn the lights off. Any amount of decent lighting will reveal the purple aspect of this color, which is awesome because I think it's beautiful. It's definitely the type of color you wanna use in select spaces. It's appropriate if you wanna use it on all four walls, I would say. It would just naturally make that room an accent room. So dining rooms, bathrooms, like a powder room specifically, anything that isn't the main color in the home, like a hallway where everything's sort of connected to it, this color will be seen, it will be noticed. So just be aware of that. I have seen examples of purple kitchen cabinets circulating on the internet. This is a purple I would advise against using on cabinets just because it is a little bit vibrant and it has that coolness to it. If anything, maybe you can go for like a blackened purple, like an eggplant purple on your cabinets because at least that resembles something that you eat in a kitchen. And I do love me some baba ganoush, I gotta tell you. Baba ganoush, baba ganoush. But I would more so put this in accent wall, furniture territory, not kitchen cabinets because you might think it's cool for a couple months and then you'll probably wanna repaint it and that's expensive. So now that we know about this color, what are some other colors that you can use alongside it, either in the same space or in different rooms in your home? Well, I got three wall color pairings and two trim color options, both a light and a dark. Wickham Gray HC171 is the first wall color I would recommend alongside Amethyst Shadow. It is a light, cool blue leaning gray. It's actually the lighter cousin of the mega popular color Stonington gray. And that color is more of a traditional gray where it's kind of cool, kind of warm, right in the middle. But in practical use, I do find that the cool side wins out a little bit both with Stonington Gray and Wickham Gray. I will say this is a slightly complimentary choice just because the undertones are a little bit 
opposite where you have kind of purple that has a touch of red and then Wickham gray, which has that bluish green. But what they both have in common is that cool blue undertone. So they won't be as opposing as you might think. They do fit together quite nicely. Wickham Gray ends up being a great light color choice with an LRV right around 68. And that's quite a bit lighter than Amethyst Shadow. Mystic Green is next, and it has the color code 2138-50. This is a color that takes things into a similar direction as Wickham Gray, but it has more color, more coloration, more richness. And there's also a touch more more warmth as well, because instead of a cool gray, there's an emphasis on sage green. It's still cool feeling, but not really from an apparent blue undertone. It's more so the gray that's added in that cools it down ever so slightly. This is a great mid-tone color choice, so still quite a bit lighter than Amethyst Shadow, but darker than Wickham Gray. So it's kind of a nice happy medium within that same sort of color hue. My third choice is a very special color and you may have not heard of it, but you should know it. It's called Ice Formations, color code 973. This is the third wall color choice and it's another mid-tone, although it is lighter than the last one and also much warmer. And if you're wondering how you might know the color, but not the name, big fun fact, this color's other name is Revere Pewter. <laughs> so one of the most popular colors in the entire Benjamin Moore catalog, Revere Pewter equals ice formations. Exactly the same color, just different names. Any name you go with, this is an iconic, neutral, warm color, but it also works beautifully with cool colors because it really has that beautiful balance and blend. And I knew I wanted to incorporate at least some warmth in this color palette just because of that blue undertone in Amethyst Shadows and Wickham Gray and to a lesser extent, the green color we talked about. All right, so we got wall colors taken care of. What about trim colors? The woodwork, the baseboards, your door frames, your doors, your window frames, anything that isn't drywall essentially. Decorator's white would be my clean white color choice. It feels cool without being blue leaning. And the only reason it is cool is because it has that bit of gray mixed in to keep it really sleek and smooth. This is an immensely popular white and with a name like Decorator's White, you can't really go wrong. It's also one of those quintessential clean soft whites that doesn't feel creamy or yellow leaning, which will really be prominent against these cooler colors we've been talking about. So that's why I went with something that's a little more stark, I would say. If you are using Amethyst Shadow on your walls and maybe you didn't want white trim, what are some options for you? Well, the first option would be to continue Amethyst Shadow onto your baseboards, just so you have a more seamless look altogether. Be sure to use the proper trim paint though. So don't use the same paint you used on the walls on your trim. You gotta make sure that your trim is painted with trim paint or at least a finish that can withstand more cleaning and wiping. But in terms of the color, you can totally continue Amethyst Shadow onto those baseboards. But if you want something similar, but a little bit different, I would recommend Blackberry as the dark trim color choice. What I love about it is it's an off black, nearly black paint color, but it has this hint of cool purple in its undertones. Really, there's enough of a difference between it and Amethyst Shadow where they will stand out against each other. You will see this really dark rich trim, but they're in that same sort of family. So they do fit together quite nicely. Here's the full palette altogether. What do you think? And here's another color quickie if you wanna learn even more about another color. Subscribe for our six videos every single week. And if you wanna further support this family run business, my full-time job, click that join button and become a member today. You're the best for watching and see ya in the next video.